So let's look at some of the other tools you can use with SSH. So SSH is great. It allows us to connect and work on our own computer. The next common question is, well, now I have files on two different computers and I need to move them back. So there's a series of tools of essentially using SSH to transfer files. The first one we'll look at is the SCP command. So SCP is basically the same as the CP command, the copy command on Linux, only SCP allows you to copy files from one computer to another computer. Uh, you can actually use it locally, there's nothing wrong with that, but it would be silly to use locally. So we tend to use it remotely. So let's say uh, I'm going to create a new file here, so I'm just going to call it new file, and then I'm just going to type in it, this is my file, I created it on Raven, which is the name of this machine. So now I have a new file, it's sitting right up there. Um, I want to move this file to Elrond, right? Or I want to move Pod from Elrond back. But we'll start by moving this file to Elrond and we'll do the move in reverse direction. So if I want to do that, I type in SCP, just like the CP command, the next argument is my source file. So my source is going to be new file and then my destination. Now, with the CP command, your destination would always be a local path, right? It would be something on this machine. With the SCP command, it can be something on any machine you can connect to the SSH. So I'm going to do a CRCLR A, I'm going to put in my Elrond connection. Uh, credentials, sailorA at lrad-01.cs.colorado.edu. Then you do a colon, and then after the colon, you put the path on the remote machine. So, um, all of these paths on the remote machine, if you don't by default, are going to be, I mean, if I do this, this is going to be relative to my home directory on the remote machine. So if I just do this, it's going to copy it to my home directory on my own machine. Actually, if you put nothing after the colon, that'll be the default. It's going to copy it just to my home directory on my own machine. If I did like documents, it's going to copy it into the documents directory on my home machine, music, so on and so forth. I can do just a straight slash if I wanted to do someplace other than my home directory, like right? if I wanted to copy it to like the etc. folder on my own machine. This would fail because I don't have the right to write to the etc. folder. You have to root to write to the etc. folder on machines and not root on that machine, but if you were rooted, and if this user had access to write to that, then that would be on the work. I'm fine with putting it in my home folder, so that's what we're going to do. And now I'm going to run this command. Because it's SSH in the back end, I still have to give it a password, right? It's not like it can magically get by with a password now, so I will give it a password. And then you'll see it gives us a few little stats. You can turn these off if they annoy you via a flag, but it said, it copied a new file, it was 38 bytes, it copied so fast that it couldn't even figure out the speed, right? It's divided by zero error here. But for a bigger file, this would tell me the average speed and how long it took to copy. So now, if I SSH back onto Alra, right? So let's connect back to Alra again. And if all of this password typing annoys you, we'll show you how to avoid that. You gotta be careful entering your password wrong too many times on Elra, because it will. Elra decides it no longer likes me for the evening. I probably have to wait an hour. Um, I'm going to repeat that same thing with another server that's at my house, but you guys could continue to do this with Elra if you like. This is just because this server is not going to lock me out. Okay, so I copied my file to the remote server. I'm now going to connect to the remote server. You will note that when I do this connection, my username is the same on both computers, so I can skip the whole username that part. That's just a, if you control a lot of computers, make your username the same on them, because it makes your life easier in situations like this. 
Um, but it doesn't really matter either way. Okay. So now when I look on my remote computer, we'll see that file I just copied sitting right there. If I look at its contents, it matches what I did locally. So let's go ahead and I'm going to edit the file. And I'm going to add to it, oh, uh, I edited this on Condor, right? Or I'll run your Texas case. So now I'm going to close it. You will note that this is where knowing a command line text editor comes in handy. If you missed the Emacs session, you can go watch the videos on it. You can't use Genie across SSH, right? I need an editor that's going to run inside the command line. So Emacs or Bim, or Gedit or Nano, but Emacs or Bim. So if you um, log on to a remote computer and you run Bim or Emacs from a command line, does it run the configuration that's on that computer? Yes. The... And it runs the, so Emacs and Bim have to be installed on the remote computer, right? right? But yeah, it runs the configuration on my own computer. Um, so you need to copy your config file around if you have a specific configuration like. Or you get clever like I am. This is a total aside. So the Emacs config is this .emacs file. Uh, so Linux has what's called symlinks, which are essentially a way to make a fake file that's just a pointer to another file. So when you try to read this file, it actually reads this file. So my Emacs config file is actually just a pointer to my Emacs file inside Dropbox. So now any computer where I use Dropbox, I just use the same configuration, and that way I can essentially mirror a single Emacs file across a whole bunch of computers I work on. So there's a whole bunch of ways to do this, but yeah, everyone comes up with their own clever solution, so they don't have to retype their config, so they can basically have one config file, but that's essentially getting mirrored everywhere. So tricks of the trade, there's other ways of doing this as well. Uh, you can also set it up so like every time you run SSH, part of the SSH command like automatically copies all your config files there first before you log in. It just redoes that every time you log in. The Dropbox solution works fine for me, but um, yeah, that's how you can you can do that for any old config file and, and basically point it out of a common directory. So uh, like I said, so knowing Emacs or Vim or something comes in handy in situations like this because it's all available to you. Also, they're awesome. Um, so I just edited a new file. I'm now going to exit. And I want to copy a new file back. So if I look at my local copy of new file, it's still the old one, right? I just modified the one on my mode server. So I'm going to use the SCP command again, only this time I'm going to reverse it. So the syntax is the same. The server I want to connect to, you guys have your username in front of it. Um, only this time I want to get an actual file. One downside to this is you will find that, you know, tab based auto completion doesn't work with these remote servers because can't go in, it's not going to go connect to the server in advance to figure out what's not complete. So a limitation if you're used to just hitting tab every 30 seconds or every one second like I am to get your file paths, uh, doesn't work so well on remote servers. But it will still work locally. I'm just going to overwrite the local file. If I wanted to, I could rename this something else. And now when I cat it out, So I'm going to copy it from the remote server to the local server. Yes, just now. For a second. And you'll see now I'm, I mean, it copied back from this way too. I don't know how I managed to erase it. I went back to my command history. I thought I'd find some stupid mistakes on there. But SCP, you can use to copy in either direction. No, I SCP might. Go try this, or look in the man look in the man page. You might even be able to copy from one server to another server using SCP. A lot of these other commands will let you do that, in which case it probably need to ask you for two passwords because it's opening up two and it's basically using your computer as a bridge to copy from computer A to computer B and you're sitting in the middle. 
Uh, I don't actually know if it can do that, but you're certainly welcome to try it. Is there an easy way, if you're already logged into a remote computer, to copy that back to your... Uh, like if you're logged into the SSH? Yeah. No, you can't copy files directly to the SSH. Um, you would fire up a second terminal and use the SCP command. Or if you have SSH on both of them, you could run from the remote computer and you could use SCP to copy back to your initial computer, right? So SSH is a client server model. Um, pretty much all of your laptops and in the VM, the SSH client is installed, which is what allows us to connect to other computers. I can't, like, the SSH server isn't installed. So if I tried to SSH into your Ubuntu box right now, it wouldn't work. You could install the SSH server. That's fine. I mean, you need to know what you, there's a Google install SSH, so it's called SSHD uh, for SSH daemon. The D part is the server side. Um, if you Google install SSH daemon Ubuntu 12.04, you can find the instructions for installing on there. It's not that hard. Um, when you do that, you're opening up a door into your computer, right? So you want to make sure you change your default password and all this other stuff. Uh, it's somewhat protected because your computer is sitting on the campus wireless and you can't get them from the internet. But I'm also sitting on the campus wireless and I could connect to you from right here. So you, that's why we would turn on by default. It's a security hole unless you know what you're doing, but you could turn them on, in which case you could use SCP to basically, assuming it's publicly routable, so it would work for your laptop, but if you're on two servers with direct internet connections, you could use SCP to come from that. 